The vast majority of Apple's devices come with biometric authentication as standard. That means they use fingerprint, facial, and even iris recognition in the Vision Pro to unlock. This functionality is available to us too, which means we can make sure our sensitive data can only be read when unlocked by a valid user. This is, sadly, a really strongly powerful Objective-C API, but it's only a little bit unpleasant to use a Swift UI, which is better than we've had in other frameworks we've seen previously. Before we write any code, we've got to add a new key to your project options, explain to the user why you want to add Face ID. For reasons known only to Apple, we pass the Touch ID request text in code and the Face ID request text in project options. I don't know why, it's just how it is. So select up here bucket list, then choose bucket list from a list of targets. And now you want to go to this info tab. Choose any existing key, like this one here, for example, then right click on it and select add row. Inside here, you want to scroll down to the very large privacy section down here. And you see there's a bunch of different keys you can provide to uh, unlock all kinds of things like Siri or speech recognition or TV provider or who knows what. There's lots of things inside here. And so we're going to add this one here, privacy face ID usage description. That's the one you want to add. And I know there's stacks to choose from, but that's the one you want. Face ID user description. Add that one now. And then uh, for the text, enter why you want face ID. For example, you might say, we need to unlock your data. Now head back to content view because we can go ahead and write our biometric code. First things first, we want to bring in a new framework called local authentication. I mentioned earlier, this is only a little bit unpleasant, and here's where that unpleasantness comes in. Swift developers use a special error protocol for handling errors that occur at runtime, but Objective-C has its own special class called NSError. We need to be able to pass that into the function we're about to call and have it change inside the function rather than getting a new value back. Now, this was very, very common in Objective-C, but it's quite an alien way of working in Swift. So we're going to mark this special behavior using ampersand. Change the value in and let it be changed internally. So we're going to write an authenticate method inside our content view to isolate all our biometric functionality in a single place. To make that happen requires four distinct steps. First, make an instance of a new type called LA context, which allows the query biometric status and perform the actual authentication check. Second, we'll ask that context, are you capable of performing biometric authentication. This is important. For example, Apple Watch or uh, iPod Touch hasn't got Touch ID or Face ID. If biometrics are possible, we then kick off the actual request for authentication. Again, this will pass in uh, the closure to run when it completes, but it'll read that check string we asked for when it unlock your data automatically. And when these have been authenticated or not, our completion closure is called and it'll tell us whether it's worked or not, and if not, what the error was. So we'll say down here, func authenticate. We'll make that authentication context. Our context is a new LA context like that. And the error we're going to pass in is an optional NS error. There may or may not be one. So now we're going to check whether biometric authentication is actually possible or not. We'll say if our context can evaluate policy. So we'll say, can you evaluate device owner authentication with biometrics? And if it goes wrong, we'll pass in ampersand error. Send the error in, but the ampersand means let it be written inside that place. If we're here, it's possible we can go ahead and use this thing. We'll say our reason string is we need to unlock your data. The same thing we added earlier on to that info tab because this is for touch, touch ID now. We'll then say our context should evaluate the policy. So it's saying here, this thing is going to say, can I actually work with this or not? So we'll evaluate the policy 
uh, and our policy is going to be, again, device own authentication with biometrics. And then for the reason, that's our reason string. And for the reply, that's our completion closure. Are we good to use this thing or not? So we'll say we'll receive a success or not, plus any error that took place, I'll call it authentication error here. And if success is true, it means we are good to go. We have authenticated successfully. Otherwise, it means there was a problem like that. If we get down here, we'll have an else block because it means we have no biometrics. So we haven't got face ID or touch ID or the iris ID either. None of it's actually going to work at this point. Now, this method by itself won't do anything, right? It's not connected to SwiftUI at all. So to fix that, we're going to add some state that we can adjust when authentication is successful and also add an on appear modifier to trigger authentication. And so we'll say up here, at state private var is unlocked is false by default. And this simple Boolean will store whether the app is showing its protected data or not. So we'll flip it to true when authentication succeeds. And so down here, you can see we have this little comment saying success. I'll say is unlocked is true. Otherwise, the problem, just leave it as false. And finally, we can show in here the current authentication state and begin the whole process of authentication inside our body property. So we'll say we have, let's do a vStack. If is unlocked, do text of unlocked, locked. Otherwise, text of locked. And I'll add on appear, perform, not like that, Xcode, please, really authenticate, like so. So we attach the, the on appear perform to the vStack, so it's, it's gonna work on both these things at the same time. Now, if you run the app, it's probably gonna say locked and nothing else like that. This is because by default, the simulator hasn't actually opted in to biometrics, doesn't know it's available. And with no error messages, there's nothing actually happening here, it just fails silently. If you wanna take Face ID and similar for a test drive or simulator, you wanna go and choose uh, is it device, no, IO features, there it is, Face ID, and select enrolled like that. So now we're enrolled in Face ID. When you wanna launch the app again, the on appear perform triggers this time, and we'll say, do you want to use Face ID? Yes, we do, allow. And it's now waiting for a Face ID match. Now, obviously it doesn't use your camera at this point. We want to actually just uh, simulate a matching thing. And to do that, you can go back to features, choose Face ID, and now choose, oops, Daisy, choose matching face. Now, look at the shortcut here, Option Command M, a very helpful shortcut. You can just press Option Command M to get a matching face. Unlocked appears straight away. So you can see it's working correctly now, it's matching the face, unlocks it correctly, showing the right text. Now, one warning here, when you have biometrics like this we have right now, you want to make sure you have a backup plan in place. If they fail to log in with uh, Touch ID and similar, you wanna have a backup plan like an alert saying, enter your PIN number or a local password, something like that according to what be works best for your app, a fallback, if biometrics fail, Apple does not provide that, but you gotta build it yourself.